All right, so at this point, I want to talk about traits and how they're managed in ReadBase. So ReadBase manages traits a little bit differently than uh, we did in the original version of T3 on T3 Classic. And it may at first seem a bit confusing and complicated, but this allows us to more accurately and more precisely define the traits. And it also allows us to more easily compare data that's in another database uh, that uses the same trait management and trait definitions. So there are some benefits to this slightly more complicated organization scheme. So in the original T, uh, T3, we organized, organized traits basically in a trait dictionary. And I can show you that page. So this is the old T3 classic page. And if you go to resources and trait descriptions, basically we have different categories of traits. And then we basically just have a dictionary where we have a trait name that we, you would use to associate your trait to this trait in the database with a description. So basically you would just go through, find the description that matches your trait and know what that trait name is. However, on breed-based traits are organized in a trait ontology, which is a controlled vocabulary of trait terms and definitions. And this trait ontology is managed through the crop ontology project. So that means that the trait definitions are sort of a collaborative effort between different groups. So I have links here to the crop ontology pages for each of our crops. And you can see that, you know, for example, Simit has contributed to the, the wheat trait ontology. Micarta has contributed to the barley. And then we've also had um, trait definitions contributed to the oat trait ontology from uh, PepsiCo. So these links will bring you to the cropontology.org website where the trait ontology uh, is managed. And you can view the traits here. Um, so the way the trait ontology works is that the traits are organized in a tree-like hierarchical structure. So under the root of the tree, and I can show you this image here. So we have the root term here, which is wheat traits. And underneath that, we have multiple trait categories, which are just used to group similar traits. So we have an example here, a abiotic stress traits, agronomic traits. We also have morphological and quality traits as trait categories. And then underneath the trait category, we have uh, what are term, what are defined as trait terms by the trait ontology. And what these are is basically the actual entity that is being measured, but it does not contain any information about the method that's used to observe the trait or the scale or unit that's used to measure it. So underneath the trait, what you'll find is one or more trait variable terms. And those terms are more precise because they include the trait information as well as the units or the methods that are used to measure that trait. So this allows us to have multiple variables that are different based on the different scales that are used or, or they're measured under slightly different methods. So in this example, we have the great grain yield trait term and we have different trait variables for a grain yield that's measured in grams per plot, kilograms per hectare, or one that has a, has a different method where you just measure the um, grain yield from the main tillers. So the way to view the trade ontology on breed base is if you go to the manage trade ontology browser page. And here you'll see that tree that I was showing in that diagram. So here you can explore the trade ontology and expand these trade categories to find the traits. And then underneath that, you can have, you can find the different trait variables. And it's important to note that when you match your traits up with the trait terms in the, in breed base, what you wanna do is find the variable. So the trait variable that matches your trait that you have data for. 
So all the data in the database from phenotype observations are linked to a single trait variable. So you can tell if it's a variable, if it begins with this variable of term in the trait ontology tree. And then you can also search for traits by going to search and traits. And then here you want to select the trait ontology and then you can search for traits based on a, a keyword. So here we have all the trait terms that match yield. And again, you want to find the one that says variable of, and that means that it's a trait variable, and find the, the trait variable that most closely matches your trait. So for example, for grain yield, if we're doing grain yields in kilograms per hectare, we need to know this trait name for the variable, and also this ID for the variable. So you need to know both the name and the ID. And if you're familiar with the old uh, T3 classic trait names, what we have here are some lookup tables. So these can be used to match the old trait names up with their breed based counterparts. So every trait that we had on T3 Classic has a breed base variable name and ID. That's in this table here where we have the old trait name, which is from the T3 Classic. And then here we have the breed base ID and the name. And what we'll see in a minute is when you're adding data for a trait, you have to have a column header where it's a form of trait name followed by a vertical pipe and the trait ID. So you can copy and paste the, this column here directly for the column header in the uh, phenotype upload form. So if you're already familiar with the T3 classic trait names, this is probably the easiest way to find the corresponding breed base information. Uh, any questions about traits and how they're managed? So if you measure, for example, grain yield in bushels per acre um, in a different scale, we ask that you convert your values to the scale that we have on breed base. That way, uh, we don't have too many traits and the data is more comparable if it's all in the same in the same unit. So we do ask that you convert your values first before uploading them. A uh, question about um, ontologies for high throughput phenotyping traits like mean pixel value for a given wavelength. I think the answer to that is no. Yeah. Um, so, so, they're not at least in the uh, the crop ontology, trait ontology. And so, so one one of the the advantages of, of using an ontology is that it's it's an agreement among many people, right? And and it, there's a sort of official character to it. So, uh, it allows for the joint analysis of more data across more databases, for example. Uh, and so, Nick, I think I think probably there's there's some consortium or other out there, and if not, you can start it. Um, to develop ontologies for high throughput phenotyping <laughs> traits. Mm -hmm. um, that would be something of value to the community. Yeah, I'm not sure how, since Rebase does support like drone imagery and analysis from that, I'm not sure how they store some of that information. Um, Rebase does have a concept of composed traits which is what we use for some of our time series traits. So there might be a way of composing high throughput uh, phenotyping traits using the composed traits feature as well. But that's something we'd have to think about. <laughs> 